crisis. Pakistan's Foreign Minister Shah Mahmood Qureshi took to the podium to demand aid to be allowed into Gaza and called for an end to, quote, Israeli aggression. A just solution for Palestine is imperative for the maintenance of regional and global peace and security. Clearly, the onus for restoring peace rests on Israel. And the Pakistani foreign minister joins me now from New York. Mr. Minister, thank you so much for joining us. Um, it has been a very busy day from your end. Do you hear any talks about a possible ceasefire coming anytime soon? I am convinced the tide is turning. I am convinced the public pressure, the pressure of public opinion is mounting and ceasefire is inevitable. Israel is losing out. They're losing the media war despite their connections. They are losing the media war. The tide what are their, is turning. What are their connections? <laughs> Deep pockets. What does that mean? Well, they're very influential people. I mean, they control media. I, I mean, I, I would call that an anti-Semitic remark. Well, you see, the point is uh, they have a lot of influence. Uh, and uh, they get a lot of coverage. Now, what has balanced that is the citizen journalist who has, uh, who has been reporting, uh, sharing video clips, and that has jolted people, and that has woken up people, and people who are sitting on the fence are today speaking up. Do you see how uh, in different capitals of the world, in, 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 uh, in London, in Madrid, uh, you know, in, in, in Michigan, Chicago, every place from Sydney to uh, the European capitals, people have come out and saying, put an end to this insanity. They are calling for an immediate ceasefire. Now, the Security Council has failed in forging a, uh, a joint uh, uh, statement and, and coming out with a joint statement and forging a consensus. The General Assembly today is giving a clear message to the Security Council. It is your prime responsibility to ensure peace and security. Please live up to the UN Charter. But, Mr. Ambassador, can we not separate the fact that there are calls for peace and for equal human rights for both sides, for Palestinians and for Israelis, without anti-Semitic talk and rhetoric? And we are seeing an increase in anti-Semitism throughout the world. Many of these protests are showing signs and images of anti-Semitism as well. Shouldn't you be condemning that? I will not justify any uh, rocket attacks. And I cannot justify and I cannot uh, condone the aerial bombardment that is taking place. But what about anti-Semitism? And what about I, Hamas's role in stopping the rockets? I am saying when you do not engage, when there are no negotiations, when there is occupation, when there's genocide, when there's war crime, when there's ethnic cleansing, then an extremist element takes advantage of that situation. Avoid it. How do you avoid it? You avoid it by pursuing a two-state solution, by adhering to the Security Council resolutions, respecting them, implementing them, fulfilling the promises that have been made and have been often broken. So I believe that the answer is, Israelis and Palestinians living side by side in peace. And it can only be done through a two-state solution, through negotiations, by cessation of hostilities, and a ceasefire is the first step in that direction. Does that include condemning anti-Semitism and condemning I'm statements? Not I'm not justifying any of that. You begin this conversation. I am so sorry. There are so many things I want to talk to you about, but I personally am offended as a journalist. You began this conversation by saying that Israel, suggesting that Israel has, quote, close friends and powerful friends in the media. That is an anti-Semitic trope. No, no. What I'm saying is the perception. Look at the perception the world has. You cannot ignore that, ma'am. But that's
that's a wrong perception. Would be wrong, but that's the perception. Negate it. Well, someone... Negate it. Someone... By, giving, by giving a balanced coverage, negate it. The onus is not on those who are being accused of things that aren't true. It's, it's on people like you in powerful positions to say that that's wrong. Well, what we are saying, what is wrong is wrong, and I'm not shying away from that. What I'm saying is this insanity must come to an end. We must promote dialogue. We must sit and talk, and we must promote peace. Israelis and Palestinians, everybody has a right to live. They have a right to protect their children. Look at what's happening. 230 innocent people have been killed. More than 50,000 people have been displaced. You know, 50 schools have been bombed. Hospitals have been targeted. Red Cross has been targeted. The AP office, you know, media outlets have been targeted. And what they're saying is, okay, if you think there was Hamas presence there, why don't you have an independent investigation? Well, I believe that Israel did provide in, in, in some information and shared intelligence with, with the U.S. But let's go back to the other side, because there are obviously Israeli casualties as well. And I, I keep bringing this up, because if you're going to be an honest broker, then you have to approach something like this objectively. And that doesn't seem to be the place where you're coming from. Well, I am objective, and I would want to be objective. Loss of life, I will not condone. Every life. Every human life is important to me. And what about, um, your, so you, you can agree, we can agree that, that Palestinian lives and Israeli lives are equally important. They're important. Yes, they are. So let me move on to um, another area, and that is the Uyghurs and the Muslim community there, and some two million Uyghurs. Um, many uh, in the U.S. and many other countries around the world are calling their treatment um, genocide. And, and I'm wondering why we're not hearing the same from your government. Well, my government has always uh, spoken uh, with frankness. You know, China is a very good friend of Pakistan. They've stood by us to thick and thin. And we have means of communication. And we use our diplomatic channels. We do not discuss everything in public. But China being your friend aside, and I know China provides a lot of aid, you can't just turn a blind eye to, to human rights abuses in, in one country Nobody when is. we've spent... Nobody so, is. So, so, so is something being... Is there, are there discussions behind the scenes? Is your prime minister... Always, prime minister Khan... Uh, uh, Ma'am, there's always a way of doing things. And we are not oblivious of our responsibilities. So what needs to be done then? To, to the Uyghur community around the world that is listening to you spend a lot of time talking about human rights in, in Gaza, um, question about their same legitimacy to human rights as well. Well, we have been advocating for human rights, whether they are in Gaza or in Indian-occupied Kashmir. Look at the atrocities that have been committed in Kashmir. Does the world talk about it? How many people have talked about it? You know, let's, let's be fair. You know, let's, let's have a fair assessment of how much coverage has that got. Mr. Ambassador, I, I do want to turn to the pandemic and Foreign we'll, we'll end... I'm not ambassador. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Mr. Foreign Minister. Let me, let me turn to the pandemic and ask about the latest wave that we've seen in, in your country, in Pakistan. We've seen an increased number of cases there and deaths. Um, what is being done? How alarming is that? And what does your country need to help in this fight? Uh, Biana, uh, to begin with, Pakistan has managed, under the leadership of Prime Minister Imran Khan, the first wave and the second wave reasonably well. We're in the midst of our third wave. Now, if we draw a comparison of the situation in Pakistan and next door, you know, uh, look at the situation on the, you know, what our eastern neighbor is facing, there's a huge difference. You know, there are over 4,000 casualties on a daily basis. There, have... there's, no, there's no winner. I'm not pitting you against India. I, I'm saying that every loss of life is a tragedy.
absolutely it's a tragedy and we are sympathetic and we offered we offered help you know i offered help we said listen these are human lives we are in the same region we are willing to help they did not respond but our offers still stands what we are doing is uh, we are doing our best to bring the positivity down and what we need right now is vaccine uh we have we've been gifted vaccine by china we have uh, bought vaccine but uh, the vaccine that was promised to us through covax did not come in time and what we need is uh uh, uh inoculations in, to protect our people the marginalized people you know the the paramedics the doctors you know the the, the people who are on the front line so that process is going on the numbers are uh, are increasing but we need help Mr. Foreign Minister, thank you so much for your time. I would just ask you personally to please avoid using anti-Semitic tropes that you use at the beginning of our conversation. I, I think I think they are very. I have never been anti-Semitic, and I never will be. Okay, we'll leave it there. Thank you so much.